since you are in charge of user rights what are these user rights that you know we have but we never knew about conservation wildlife yes um Wildlife well, user rights in you know, human beings are uh, naturally there are some natural rights that they have or they possess mm. uh, granted by nature and even the way our laws are made they are made in a way that those natural rights are properly provided for now as far as wildlife is concerned yes as we heard from the beginning wildlife belongs to the people of Uganda uh, for Uganda Water Facility, we hold it, we manage it as a trustee. So, the people of Uganda have a right to access their wildlife. And one of these wildlife uh, user rights that are provided in the law, actually Section 29 of the Uganda Wildlife Act, is that uh, Ugandans have a right to hunt mm. wildlife, not naturally time memorial, mm. uh, human beings use it to hunt wildlife. Ugandans have a right to farm wildlife, they have a right to ranch wildlife, they have a right to trade in wildlife, they have a right to use wildlife as for education purposes, mm. like the zoos, and they have also a right to access uh, these uh, uh, wildlife resources, like wild, wild yams, like um, materials for, 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 for handcraft, and through that, that's the entire package that the law mm. provides. And it is, uh, it is uh, provided as class A, B, C, D, uh, and up E and mm. F. So uh, I would think that all Ugandans need to know their right to access wildlife. UWA is available to assist them in applying uh, and acquiring these licenses. We give technical guidance or advice. We give seed stock, some animals that a company or an individual, a community group can start with. And we continue monitoring and inspecting mm. and uh, uh, to ensure that uh, you do that within the law because you have to separate someone who is licensed to utilize wildlife from someone who is not licensed or who is using it illegally. Uh. Mm. Yeah, well, still at Isamal, I've come to realize that about the 1970s, you'd uh, suspended the wildlife use rights uh, due to political instability and, of course, the misuse that normally comes with the people. Why did it have to be revamped in this case? What is the main objective behind that? Um, naturally, even if there are your cows at home, when you realize that they are becoming fewer and fewer, and you may have, uh, you may have no more producing, you will not continue to to sell. Mm -hmm. You may halt the sale. So in the same way, around um, uh, during the past regimes, where some of these resources were not uh, properly managed, uh, we had the political turmoil. There was mis uh, I would say unsustainable utilization of some of these resources. And uh, we had to stop at, uh, around that period to ensure that uh, wildlife regains. And uh, as I told you that naturally, uh, Ugandans have a right to access their wildlife. We had to find means and ways on how we can again open up uh, to utilize wildlife in a sustainable way. And uh, that's when the new law came into place, 1996 uh, Uganda Wildlife Act, and provided for now proper mechanisms through which uh, the little that we have can still be utilized. Mm. It, it, it is the right of Ugandans to access uh, all this wildlife, so we cannot hold on it or keep it forever. Mm. I want to interject here mm. and, and mention that actually wildlife utilization is one of the strategies uh, that we are using as Uganda Wildlife Authority, as the government of Uganda, to manage the wildlife. We are looking at uh, people that for wildlife to survive, mm. most in the wild, uh, particularly in the wild, the local communities need to be involved. And for the local communities to be involved, there must be a benefit, a benefit beyond tourism. Mm. Tourism could happen in the national parks, in the protected areas. But in Uganda, we have more than 50% of wildlife occurring outside the protected areas, the game parks, what you call the game parks. So how do we manage this wildlife? That's why the government saw to that if we allowed people to make use of this wildlife, utilize it in various forms which my colleague has talked about, through hunting, through farming, through uh, ranching, through trade, or through education, 
then perhaps we would, uh, mm. would make a difference. So what happened was that after the ban in 1970, we saw an increase in poaching, and we saw that something had gone wrong. We needed to stop poaching and make sure that people recognize that actually wild drive is useful. So one way to do that is to say, use it. So we, we this program of wild drive use rights is actually looking at wild drive outside protected areas, mm. wild drive that is on people's land, and we are saying don't look at it as uh, a waste resource. It is gold. It is an investment. You can actually invest in this and make money from this wild drive. We have people in Uganda who are doing ranching. The proprietor of WBS is actually keeping ostriches. Yeah. And uh, it is one way, and I will later on, will later on tell you what you can get from these ostriches, which people don't know. We have people who are farming crocodiles in Uganda. We have people who are trading in wildlife. They capture chameleons. People look at chameleons. They don't know that they are good pets outside there, and they f they fetch a fortune. We if you keep them, them. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and then multiply them and then sell them, it's a fortune. You will be richer than somebody who is, has a big shop in town. So we are saying that uh, it is possible that this wildlife which you see outside the protected areas mm. can be beneficial. You can make use of it through your license mm. and you can make money out of it. And that's what we are here to talk about today. And uh, let, let me begin off with some of the animals. Uh, I think I asked Samuel this one. Um, what are some of the animals that I can rear in my small... You mentioned some of them, the, the crocodiles, but do you have specific lists of animals? You say these ones, well, we ca you can manage to have rights, you know, to have them in your, in your farms or private uh, ranches. Yes, uh, thank you for that question. All wildlife mm. is potentially uh, uh, under wildlife user right program. Mm. All animals you can keep them. It all depends on the capa on the capacity. Uh, for example, you've been to the wildlife zoo in Tebe, wildlife education center, and there are also several other upcoming uh, private zoos here mm. in Kampala that you've raised. Or you've traveled and so you've seen various zoos uh, in, in different countries. You'll find all categories of wildlife inside the zoo. So in the same way here, as long as you can afford, as long as you have the capacity in terms of land, in terms of human resource, then you can have all wildlife. But generally, we determine the animals to give depending on one, the objective that you are having. Mm. For example, I would say much, most of the birds we have in Uganda can be licensed. Mm. Most of the antelopes that you have, these are Uganda cobs, impaders, mm. uh, uh, bushbucks, uh, errand, all those can be licensed. Uh, all reptiles, talk of all types of snakes, uh, crocodiles are also reptiles, talk of tortoises, talk of chameleons, they can all be licensed. Uh, what you need usually is basically to have land, a piece of land where you can keep these animals. Now I will say, for example, if you need the butterflies, to keep butterflies, even a small bedroom is enough because all you need are small containers and food for, 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 for these butterflies uh, which can include the manufactured sugars or just plant flowers in your garden uh, where the, these butterflies can mm -hmm. visit. And within just even a small 50 by 100 plot, you have serious business. And you know what you can use these butterflies for? What? What's uh, that? You know, that's just for... <laughs> <laughs> what can I benefit from butterflies? Oh, for butterflies. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, most butterflies, you know, uh, they, they have different colors. They have beauty. Yeah. So people have these uh, butterfly houses. And people, tourists, enjoy coming in. And they see how these butterflies are Butterfly flying. houses. Someone feels comfortable to leave his to leave his trace for someone to enter into a butterfly house and he starts photographing, posing with the with these butterflies. Mm. But largely uh, abroad, where the these most of these butterfly breeders export, we know that they use b these butterflies for another very interesting which activity or use which I've not seen in Uganda. Uh, have you been to these parties where they they release uh, poppers uh, mm. at the pattern? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. open these poppers now. 
for those who have money, they go to butterfly farms and buy these butterflies. So instead of releasing a pop, uh, yes, a pop, uh, then you release the butterfly. I think it's yeah. so beautiful, very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. That's an investment someone would be interested to start here. And uh, you know, our uh, Ugandan is like So we have some butterfly farms here? <laughs> oh, yes, we have some butterfly farms. And I'm aware uh, they have been approached by some Ugandans to, to, to provide them with these butterflies at their parties. Mm. Uh, but largely for tourism uh, purposes. So, uh, and that's a, a side of insects. Now, when you come to the side of birds, we have animals like uh, 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 these parrots, African grey parrots. An African grey parrot commonly understood as the kasuku. It's a treasured animal. There are some cultures outside Uganda, uh, especially in the Middle East. Someone treasures to have a parrot as a pet at home. Mm. Most people say it mimics, it repeats the word. So if anything was talked at home,